Welcome to Lionesses of Africa, the online content channel for women entrepreneurs across the African continent and the brands and the businesses they're building. First up, we're speaking to Lisa Ackroyd, founder and creative force behind Colony, one of South Africa's up and coming luxury leather accessory brands. Danica went to her Johannesburg studio to find out more. Lisa, explain to me your journey. You used to study at Tux and you changed your whole life. It was during my final year that I decided that I've, I've always had a big love for leather and um, I wanted, I've always wanted to do my own thing as well. And um, during my holiday, I did a short course in, in leather work, just thinking that it might be a hobby. Um, and then eventually it just grew into a business. Uh, slowly but surely I started getting clients, started with family and friends, but then it grew and that's when I decided, decided to actually make a living of it. What sort of things did you produce in the beginning stages of your startup? My, my whole aim was to get a range that can cater to as many clients as possible. So I started with 10 products ranging from the smaller items such as wallets and belts up to laptop bags and um, travel bags as well. How did you market your products in the beginning? Did you use social media? Did you have a budget for marketing? What was your, what was your plan to get your product known? It was basically by word of mouth. Um, I didn't do any marketing. You know, clients would just refer other people to me. And I started out very small, it was just me in the beginning for almost a year and then I started getting some employees so then when we got them I actually started doing some marketing. What have been your main challenges as an entrepreneur? I think uh, the main challenge at the beginning definitely was cash flow. Um, I was still studying so I couldn't get a loan or anything so I had to start making bags, selling them, buying new leather, making more bags. So that was initially that was quite a quite a challenge for me and then after that it was to, to get the right employees, you know, to, to get people that are motivated and as passionate as I am about the business. What do you plan to do with your staff? What do they need to come to you with as a skill in terms of becoming one of your employees? I'm offering them a new skill set. Um, the thing is, uh, the people that I've got here, they've had some experience with stitch, you know, with sewing and, and in the clothing industry. Um, but from there, you know, I teach them from A to Z to how to work with the leather and especially the hand stitching. It's not something that you, you know, there's not a lot of people that can actually do it anymore. So I, you know, I transfer that skill as far as possible to my employees. What are your future aspirations for Colony? What do you want to see happen with your brand? The big aspiration is to actually start exporting a lot. I've got uh, good contacts with, with uh, retailers overseas, um, which I you know, will follow up with later in this year and start getting my products out there. What makes Colony unique? What's special about your brand? I think it's the story behind the product and the immense quality and, and detail that goes into each and every bag. Um, I mean it takes almost two days to finish a bag so it's really quite a long process and there's a lot of detail and love that goes into manufacturing each piece. What advice would you give women starting up a new company looking to create a brand and to put themselves out there into the business world? Well when I started I think it's just to, to have the courage to do what you love and if you've got the passion you should just follow it. Um, and if you've got perseverance, you will make a success of your business. So if you can just get over those stumbling blocks in the beginning, you know, from there on it will, it will work out for you. Several of our lionesses of Africa have been making the news this month. Zimbabwean design entrepreneur Pam Samasuo Niawiri has scooped two top international awards for her innovative accessories design work. All three awards were announced on the 9th of May, with Pam taking the Zimbabwe Achievers Award and the Avery and Harper's Bazaar Design Experience Award. Another talented designer from the Congo took the Woman for Africa Award. Nigerian entrepreneur Kofu Akingube, who's the founder and CEO of Secure ID, unveiled an innovative new prepaid solution for the Nigerian Bar Association, making enrollment to the association a really seamless process. Young Kenyan fintech startup entrepreneur and founder of Valoraha, Wangechi Mawangi, has won the prestigious US Global Social Impact Award for her innovative Student Investment Clubs initiative. Leading Kenyan woman entrepreneur and the founder and group CEO of Kenya Women Holding, Dr. Jennifer Riria, has been named as the Africa Economy Builders Entrepreneur of the Year for 2015. Finally, this month's new book review for women entrepreneurs is Mumpreneur, 
by Annabel Carmel. It's a complete guide to all of those mums who are looking to start their own entrepreneurial ventures. It gives really practical advice and step-by-step -step tips to getting any new business venture off the ground. And it's a great read for any budding new mumpreneur. Today we're joined in the studio by Rentia Draganis, who's the founder and the real inspiration behind the South African luxury skincare and spa brand, Africology. Welcome to the program, Rentia. Thank you, Melanie. This is a fascinating entrepreneurial journey you've been on. Would you like to just share a little bit of that with us? Sure, there's so much to share. <laughs> um, for me, it, it has definitely been a journey. Um, just that, that space where we often find ourselves, especially women, where we have our own dreams, we have our own visions, but life might not always give it to us. Yeah. And, and then you have to kind of re-look at yourself and, and your own life and, and make a choice, decide yeah. what's going to work for you. And I think Afrocology's journey was that defining moment when I gave my passion permission to happen. <laughs> and, and how did that passion start? I, what was the genius behind um, Africology? Yeah, it's always such, for me, it, it's such a wonderful um, revisiting and, and, and it, just remembering where I started with my, my, um, my love for healing and working with the body and life coaching and just working with people and bringing that sense of inspiration back to them. And then having a defining moment where I knew that what I did, I wanted so many more people to, to connect with it and to feel with it. Um, and when you walk into an Africology store, it reminds me of, um, uh, of the old apothecaries. It's got that glorious feeling of jars and bottles and beautiful creations and potions and, and that beautiful sort of serene feel. What was, the, what was the brand ethos? The brand ethos was to go back to nature and reconnect with what is bio-identical to our body, to our being, and, and to heal naturally. So the whole packaging, the, the whole brand is about being authentic. So we had to um, pack it and present it in accordance to what we really want, we, what we wanted to do. Uh, and tell us about the sort of things you're doing uh, with Africology. What, what, can, what can customers expect when they walk into an Africology store or a spa? At Africology, we, we, our, our, our biggest mission or our aim is that we want to care for you. Um, we want to heal. So from servicing you, from helping you to find that one product or that one treatment that's going to work for you, we often teach and we say, tell us what's happening in your body and then we can help you. Because it is about being authentic and it is about prescribing something that's really going to work for you. And it is all, all natural. So, I mean, if, if you have a, um, a skincare complaint or if you have st you're stressed and it's showing in various parts of your body, what sort of things are on offer if they come for a spa treatment or if they come for a particular product? Well, what, what we, as we said, what's happening in your body? Because the body is a printout of what's happening with your, with your mind and your emotions. Then we can kind of align and say, OK, well, is the stress in your skin really that there's a breakdown in cellular um, communication or is it really just something where you need to come and have that massage do you need a little bit of oxygen therapy or is it just that we need to work with you while you're working with your own emotional feelings um, and de-stressing you so all our therapies are very different to most places so it's very holistic very holistic and is that just just finally um, this is this is such a family enterprise um, does that holistic approach to life and business also come through because it is a family business I think the kids grew up with the business. So I started in my kitchen making products and pots and, and so they would go to school and had their sandwiches would smell like aromatherapy oils and <laughs> we had to do labels and cut them out ourselves. So they all worked with me from a very early age. So they understood the whole process of creating and delivering and wanting people to have the best. And so I'm very blessed that all four of them are involved in the business and they, they share the same philosophy and they're passionate about wanting to do good. So just seeing my son in procurement and um, buying his essential oils and the first thing he does when they arrive is to smell them and know whether it's authentic or not. Um, That's there's, wonderful. There's this sense of peace of mind knowing that the passion is shared. That's wonderful. And where to next for Africology? Well, Africology is busy expanding internationally. Um, so we have just appointed three more distributors, uh -huh. um, a beautiful spa in Luxembourg that's just opened. Um, 
Um, so and, exciting and times. It's, it's wonderful. And, and I think it's just so incredible to see how your dream and your passion and what you love for kind of unfolds like a flower. And it just goes places where it needs to be. That's wonderful. And that's and wonderfully inspiring for other women entrepreneurs who are going to come behind you. Absolutely. Terrific. Thank you so much for sharing that with us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Melanie. It's thank you. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Africa's design scene has never been more vibrant. And today we're joined by Pam Samasua Niawiri, who's the founder and creative force behind leading Zimbabwean accessory brand Vanuvenwe. Pam, welcome to the program. Hi, Melanie. Thank you so much for having me. Pam, this has been an incredible year for Vanuvenwe and yourself as a designer. Tell us a little bit about what's been happening. Uh, so much has been happening. I'm actually quite overwhelmed at the moment. I graduated from university last year in July, but by the time I graduated, I had already started making strides within the African fashion industry. When I went back to university, all I wanted to do was get stuck in my studio and create the things that I wish existed. But it just took me off into a different direction. And from July and to date, I've won five fashion awards, of which three are international ones. So this has been really quite an amazing year so far. Um, what, what makes your, your brand so different? Uh, your designs are obviously very avant-garde, but how are they connecting with your customers? I, I researched my concept over three years while I was at university. I was so focused in ensuring that whatever it is that I created was different and it wasn't anything that was already there on the scene. So I devised a storytelling concept where my bags would tell some sort of story to the consumer. And also I decided to go the handcrafted way because I wanted to also prove that handcrafted goods could equally look as luxurious as a Christian Dior handbag. And also I think there's more value and humanness in creating handcrafted goods. And so therefore my my concept was birth. So it's handcrafted, conceptual, storytelling handbags. And now that your brand is getting itself known out there in the global marketplace, what's next on the horizon? Uh, there's so many things I'm, I'm doing. My dissertation, which I wrote at university last year, has um, actually been approved for printing. And um, it's on the African fashion revolution, where I just give recommendations on how we can go forward. And also for the next four months, I'll be spending in Morocco, working with social enterprises community, which is what I love working with uh, with different communities and i kind of want to take my brand into the ethical route where where it's com um, helping communities help themselves so that's what i'm that that's what is planned at the moment and how much do you think that travel and that exposure to different cultures is going to influence your your brand and your designs going forward it's just going to be amazing you see the thing about me is whatever i do i don't do it for myself I want to ensure that everybody else, including the African fashion industry, is also involved. And I think my exposure is not only for me, but it's also for the African fashion industry itself. So this is such a fantastic opportunity because while I'm there as well, I'm also having an influence in our industry for more designers to go the ethical route way, to go into communities and look for those people with talented um, traditional craftsmen and use those to, to create our products, our Made in Africa products, rather than us having to go to China to get our stuff made. That's great news and great news for the industry and for African design. Thanks so much, Pam, for joining us on the programme today. Thank you so much, Melanie.